Hi, I'm Debbie Nelson with Mixing Publishing, and we've been doing a series of videos about graphene. So I would like to welcome our Editor-in-Chief, Adrian Nixon from England. I am here from the United States. Welcome, Adrian. Afternoon, Debbie. How are you? Oh, good morning. Yeah, it's, it's a six-hour time difference, so it's uh, always wonderful to meet with you. We've got a topic today that um, might just be a surprise to some people. So we're going to talk about quantum dots and how in the world they relate to graphene and cannabis. Uh, let's have a look and see what they look like. Um, these are some quantum dots uh, that have been dissolved in water, sort of dispersed in water. So up here you can see a little dropper, and this is um, uh, a sample jar of um, pure water. And then it's got ultraviolet light shining on it in all these pictures. And can you see what happens when we drop the uh, drop of liquid containing quantum dots? Oh, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah, you can see it glowing bright blue, bluey green color in these pictures. Yeah. It, so it's, it's quite, yeah, it's quite a powerful effect. And it seems to take up a lot more space than when we were just talking about it being so extremely small. Uh, yeah, it does actually. The the, uh, the quantum dots are quite a powerful phenomenon, and they will they can be te detected at very very small levels. This just shows a concentrated droplet of quantum dots spreading out throughout the uh, the liquid, which I thought you might like to see. So uh, that gives you an idea about um, the uh, the luminescence effect. So how does this relate to cannabis? Well, um, the when cannabis is grown in America, and I think, Debbie, is it, is it legal in some places of America and not others? Yes, yeah, certain states you are allowed to have cannabis. Some of, some of the states, it's for recreational and medicinal. Right. Some states, it's only for medicinal. and some states, it's not at all. Right, so there's a really big problem sort of working out where you're legal and where you're illegal, but also there'll be cannabis that's grown legally and cannabis that's grown illegally as well, I would imagine. Right, exactly. Yeah. So the problem is how to tell the difference between legal cannabis and illegal cannabis. It turns out that quantum dots can come to the rescue. So you can see here in this diagram that uh, we start off with um, a cannabis leaf um, and we can make a mixture of quantum dots of different sizes to create effectively a, a unique barcode. And if we could put that, uh, those quantum dots into the irrigation water used for the legal cannabis crop, we can record that barcode and effectively we can then tell the difference once we've harvested the plant, whether or not it contains the barcode and whether it's legal or not. It's quite cool, isn't it? Yes, and, and you detect this by the UV light? Like you exactly. Were so you can see here, this is work done by James Tour's uh, lab at Rice University. And I think you know James Tour, don't you, Debbie? Yeah, a favorite, a favorite researcher of mine. Yeah, he's, he's a great guy, yeah. Uh -huh. um, it comes up with lots of bright things. And this is, uh, you can see here that mixing different uh, size quantum dots gives us different colors or different wavelengths of light. And we can uh, mix and match the amount we add as well as the precise size. And what James Tour's lab has done, he's developed techniques for separating out the quantum dots into different sizes very precisely. So where there is no barcode for a legal plant, that's nice and clear, you shine ultraviolet light on, nothing happens. In the legal plants, you shine the light and you get this uh, barcode spectrum coming out, which there are machines that can read this, they're commercially available. Not only does it tell you it's legal or illegal, but it will look, that combination, that barcode, could tell you which farm produced it, what date it was produced, uh, what the growing conditions were like, and so on. So you can store a lot of information into that. That's quite cool, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. Well, yes, absolutely. Just from watering the plants, when you've got the graphene quantum dots in there. Now, I noticed on the other slide it said no heavy metals. So obviously, yes. graphene is replacing the, he the metals that were in regular quantum dots. Yeah. So it's non-toxic. Yeah, exactly. So if I stop sharing my screen for a minute, so yeah, not only can we tell the difference between uh, legal cannabis and illegal cannabis, but you can also tell where it's grown, the conditions, and store lots of information. Mm -hmm. As a recap, <laughs> you've got <laughs> dots, <laughs> you can see them in electroviolet light, and all you have to do is water the plants with them. So, yeah. you know, can I ask you a question about this? Yeah, cost effective 
to be able to use these graphene quantum dots? Is it relatively easy to make them? Or? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, it's a hard one to answer because the quantum dot production, graphene quantum dot production, hasn't really been commercialized properly yet. So um, we don't really have a proper handle on the costs. However, my guess would be they're probably not very expensive to produce. And uh, they are made from carbon after all. And Jim Tours Lab um, at Rice used standard uh, food manufacturing equipment, field flow fractionation, I think it was, to separate out the uh, different sizes. So the machinery is there already, the chemistry is there already, and um, I would imagine it'd be fairly straightforward to take them through to market and produce them. So uh, once you get this thing scaled up, then the costs would start tumbling to, uh, come tumbling down. But obviously, you know, whenever you have a brand new material, if you're only producing one of something, it's very, very expensive. But once you start producing hundreds, thousands, millions, the cost comes right down. So ultimately, this will be, um, as they say in England, cheapest chips.